Namaste. I am Dr. Vivek, Senior Consultant at Shaker Eye Hospital. Today I will be talking to you about iritis or anterior uveitis or iridocyclitis. This is a reasonably common uh, manifestation or a disease which happens. Typically, a patient with iritis presents to us with uh, sudden onset pain, redness in the eye, intense redness, a lot of redness, fiery red, and then a lot of watering. And the most classical uh, symptom is that they are unable to keep their eyes open under bright light. Even the normal ambient light, like a tube light, also kind of hurts them. So they are unable to look at things when, uh, when the things are bright and there is severe irritation and watering and all that and it's quite disturbing so even the simple tasks are also becoming difficult so invariably they present to us on the same day or the day after because it's unbearable so these are all fairly common problems that can happen at any age group typically in the active or the adult, young and uh, adult age group like say around 20 to 50 years of age this is where we see this uh, more commonly however uh, people of any age, starting from children to elderly, also can get affected. So, iritis, uh, as I said, typically uh, presents with sudden onset. All of a sudden, like yesterday, last night I was comfortable, had a good night, uh, dinner, slept well. Today morning I wake up with a severe pain and redness and I am unable to look at bright light. This is typically the how, how it uh, manifests. So, uh, people who present to us, when we examine them, the water of the eyes, really fiery red and uh, they are unable to look at the machine when we uh, do an examination they say that I am unable to keep, their, uh, keep my eyes open uh, and look at the light that you are shining, shining into my eye so we generally put some drops and we have our own tricks of the trade so to evaluate and based on that evaluation we make a diagnosis of iritis Typically, uh, the most common causes uh, could be infections due to various bacteria or uh, sometimes even uh, tuberculosis, syphilis. There could be some uh, uh, fungi as well which can cause that. Uh, many a times there can be viral infections like herpetic infections uh, which can cause uh, keratoeuveitis, where the cornea is the one which is first involved and then uh, along with that the uvea or uh, the iritis also gets uh, involved. It could also be due to injuries like post-traumatic conditions after a blunt injury or something like a shuttlecock injury or a ball, tennis ball or a leather ball or even uh, sometimes assaults can also cause this traumatic iritis. Uh, it can also be due to autoimmune conditions where the body kind of fights against itself uh, and it is uh, predisposed or these people who have this uh, HLA B27 gene are also predisposed to these conditions. There can be other uh, autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis and uh, Jogan syndrome who also can have this problem of uh, anterior uveitis or iitis. So typically when we evaluate these people, almost 70% that is 3 fourths of the people uh, will not have any other associated diseases. So generally we uh, prefer to treat them uh, on their first episode with just uh, local medications that is eye drops and at the Worst or at maximum, we could probably uh, suggest them painkillers or analgesics. Only if there, is, uh, if there are frequent recurrences or the condition is so severe that despite uh, putting them on these uh, drops, they don't respond or respond inadequately, then we subject these people to a few tests, which could be a battery of tests, uh, blood tests mostly, and occasional uh, chest x ray and maybe x ray of the sacroiliac joint, that is uh, uh, hip, hip joint. Uh, to look for signs of any other associated problems like ankylosing spondylitis or tuberculosis and things like that. So based on these test reports, we make a conclusive diagnosis, if at all we can reach a conclusion. Like I said, in almost 70% of the people, we might not be able to reach, to a, reach a conclusion saying that, okay, this is the cause. And hence, we will have to treat these people non-specifically or with just generic um, um, steroid drugs. So, uh, steroid drugs, obviously, the moment any doctor says steroids or anyone says steroids, there is a lot of panic associated with it. It need not be. There are a lot of important life saving or life continuing hormones in our body which are constituted of steroids. So, steroids are necessary for our day to day functioning. So, and it is a miracle drug when given uh, when it is necessary. So, we need not be really actually worked up 
about steroids and things like that. So anyway, that's apart from apart from the issue. So we investigate these people who are like uh, recalcitrant, are very tough to treat, are having frequent recurrences, or when we feel that there are certain uh, features or signs inside the eye when we check them under our uh, instruments. If we find out that there are certain specific signs, then we will subject these people to a few tests and based on that we do a more targeted kind of a treatment. So typically what happens, how is the course of the disease? Most of the people, like 70-80% of the people probably will settle down with a very few uh, attacks, like one or two attacks and they'll just be a normal for the rest of their lives. A few of them might end up having recurrences in either of the eyes. So first eye, typically they might have an attack on one eye and after six months or a year on the other eye and then over 10 years they might have had four or five attacks on either of the eyes. The good thing about this iritis or anti-reviewitis condition is that they are mostly, uh, people recover fully, that is their vision don't get affected. So the vision remains 6 by 6 even after an attack or an episode. So if like God appears in front of me and tells me that you have to pick one disease for yourself, probably I would pick up anti-reviewitis or iritis for myself. Because you use the medication during that period and then after that you are done and dusted. Your vision is still good, you can resume your normal activities and be done for it. So that's how it is. Then people can have recurrences, particularly during this 20 to 50 years age group, where they can have these uh, recurrences and then we keep uh, evaluating these people as and when there is a change in the manifestation or some uh, unique manifestation which happens during the course of the disease. Typically these people are managed initially only with steroid drops. Along with that, we will also give them non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs so that the need for steroids is that much lesser. However, there are uh, certain people who do require oral steroids also when the inflammation is really severe or it is not responding well enough or it's getting very very much delayed because of which their day-to-day -day routine activities are getting hampered. In those instances, we will probably also be compelled to start off with the oral steroids as well. Sometimes uh, in, the row, in the rare instances where oral steroids are also not sufficient, we might have to add other disease modifying uh, drugs which are called as immunomodulators or DMRDs, uh, which, which will help us in uh, reducing the dosage and dependence on steroids and also help in managing this condition. Typically, like I said, these uh, iritis or uveitis, uh, anti uveitis or iridal cyclitis doesn't leave behind any permanent complications or residual uh, effects. However, there, are, there, are, there is a very rare occurrence called as Fuchs heterochromic aerocyclitis. That is one uh, condition in which uh, a young man can develop a cataract at a very younger age group but also have uh, glaucoma. But these are not very common. Uh, most of the people, like 80 to 90 percent of the people, settle down with a few episodes with good vision even after uh, recurrent uh, manifestations. So, generally, iritis is a condition wherein uh, you have frequent uh, recurrences, you are quite disturbed during that period of time, but generally recover fully. So it's always good to know about the disease, uh, know about your disease and then be aware, don't get afraid, don't get scared, don't unnecessarily, uh, don't get worked up about your disease because the moment you do an online search about any particular symptom, the top search product would be the worst complication. Which, need, which, which might be un, totally unrelated to your symptom because the diagnosis is not just made by one symptom. A series of symptoms in correlation to each other which has to be associated with signs that is the evidence which is present on examination when we do a check. And then followed by a few laboratory investigations which will tell us how what is the diagnosis. So don't do an online search based on your symptoms. So, iritis is a reasonably common, simple kind of a disease, uh, if we can say so. So, I hope this was information, uh, informative enough. Uh, may all uh, be healthy and happy. Thank you so much.